welcome, graduates. Please be seated. Welcome, graduates, parents, distinguished guests, and the entire Fordham family assembled here this morning. I am Associate Dean Linda Sujan, and it is my great honor to declare the Fordham University School of Law's 111th Diploma Ceremony in session. Okay, now I'm going to make you stand again. Please join me in welcoming Michael McCarthy of the Society of Jesus, our Vice President for Mission Integration and Planning, to give the invocation. Please rise. Let us bow our heads. O source of all justice and right, the ancient book of Psalms begins by proclaiming the great blessing of the law. Blessed is the one, the psalmist says, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the company of scoffers. Rather, the law of the Lord is her joy, and on this law she meditates day and night. She is like a tree, planted near streams of water that yields its fruit in due season, whose leaves never wither, and everything she does prospers. Grant us, then, such prosperity. Give us, then, the grace to find joy in the law day and night. Focus our hearts on the cause of righteousness and heal our hearts of self-righteousness. Turn us again and again to the common good and save us from the temptations of selfish gain. Strengthen us to advocate on behalf of those most vulnerable and spare us the self-indulgence of licking our own wounds. For those who have completed their course of studies, give them joy and a sense of purpose to seek justice in all they do. For members of their families, give them a sense of pride proper to this moment. And for members of the faculty, Deepen in them a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment as they see today the fruits of their calling. Amen. 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 Please remain standing. I'm delighted to introduce Emmanuel Kim and Giselle McWart Pinard. They are two of our multi talented graduates who will lead us in the national anthem. That's right. 
All right, it was worth it to come just for that, wasn't it? Please be seated. This is, this is why you're the president. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our inspiring and devoted dean, Matthew Diller. Dean Diller has brought incredible vision and a deep commitment to both legal education and justice in the world. His dedication to our law school community is amazing, and I am honored to serve with him. Dean Diller. Thank you, Dean Sujin, and congratulations to you on completing a fantastic first year as Associate Dean. <laughs> Father McShane, Dr. Friedman, Father McCarthy, members of the University Administration and Board of Trustees, esteemed colleagues and faculty members, Ms. Sherilyn Eiffel, families and friends of the graduates, and most importantly, members of the Fordham University School of Law graduating class of 2018. I join Dean Sujin in welcoming all of you to Fordham Law's 111th Diploma Ceremony, and thank you for joining us all in the Lombardi Fieldhouse by coming inside, we have ensured that it will not rain today. Graduates, today is your day. We celebrate your achievements, your accomplishments. Everything that you have done at Fordham Law School has led you to this moment. Throughout your time at the law school, you have experienced moments of triumph, of challenge, of jubilation, of struggle, and above all, of growth. I ask you to think back to a few years ago when you were sitting in the law school's Costantino room for orientation. I imagine you were excited and eager and perhaps a bit nervous and anxious. I too had these feelings as I was delivering my orientation remarks to you. Your entry into Fordham Law more or less coincided with my re-entry to the law school community. I had just assumed the deanship when you were beginning your law school careers. Reflect back on that time. What motivated you? What inspired you to come to Fordham Law? What did you hope to get out of it? How did a Fordham Law degree fit into the vision that you had for yourself? As I myself think back, I can remember some of the things I told you during orientation. I recall telling you how very important your chosen profession is, being a lawyer is serious business. The responsibility you bear is great. People will be counting on you to help them through some of the toughest times in their lives. They will look to you for critical assistance in their businesses and other enterprises. Always remember that lawyers provide a service. We help others avoid problems and achieve their goals. We are a service profession. As you begin your legal careers, ask yourselves how you will best serve. If you need proof of how service can define a legal career, look no further than our graduation speaker and honorary degree recipient, Sherilyn Eiffel, who has devoted her entire professional career to service, from her beginnings as a fellow at the ACLU, to her teaching days at the Maryland Law School, and now her, to her presidency at the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund. In February, we unveiled a new display at Fordham Law called Alumni of Distinction. The exhibit celebrates graduates of the law school who have bro broken barriers to the legal profession. Ms. Eiffel attended the event and spoke movingly about our inaugural honoree, Franklin Williams. Mr. Williams, like Ms. Eiffel, worked for the LDF. He fought for justice and equality in the same way Ms. Eiffel does today, through our courts and through our legal system. His life was both, was both ordinary and extraordinary, and so I think it's fitting today that we hear a bit about how Franklin Williams used his Fordham Law degree. 
Mr. Williams was born just across the East River in Flushing, Queens. He attended local schools until he went away to Pennsylvania for college, to Lincoln University, the nation's first degree-granting historically black college and university. He graduated as salutatorian in 1941, and after service in the military, he enrolled at Fordham Law. As Mr. Williams went up and down the elevators of the old downtown location of the law school, he would unfortunately not have seen many students who looked like him. The overall number of minority students at the time was small. Nonetheless, Mr. Williams excelled. He passed the New York State Bar exam before receiving his legal degree in 1945, and almost immediately upon graduation, went to work setting wrongs right by taking a position with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. At LDF, Mr. Williams met up with his fellow Lincoln University graduate, Thurgood Marshall. Mr. Williams became Marshall's assistant special counsel, and together they tested and built a strategic framework for landmark cases that would advance racial equality. Among the cases that Williams and Marshall worked on together was the defense of the Groveland Boys in Florida, which Williams successfully argued in front of the Supreme Court. At the Alumni of Distinction event this past February, Ms. Eiffel had the following to say about Mr. Williams, quote, those of us who pay attention to civil rights history in particular know that after a while you start to look at the images of these extraordinary men and women through a kind of sepia lens. It's actually quite important of us, for us to take a moment and look at people like Franklin Williams and stop pretending that these were super people who were deposited from some other planet. In other words, while we sometimes tend to view historic figures like Mr. Williams as legends for good reason, we should not lose sight of the fact that these individuals were doing the job they set out to do, using the tools of our trade to represent clients to the best of their abilities. Like all good lawyers, they rejected the idea that the status quo is a given that cannot be challenged. They used legal analysis to question assumptions and craft a compelling vision of how our legal system should work and what our laws and our Constitution mean. Mr. Williams used his Fordham Law degree as a means to offer his brilliance and talent in the service of others, to make an impact on society. And you, too, can use the same tools of our trade to make an impact, to challenge the status quo, to advance our justice system, and to bring us closer to the true meaning of our laws and our Constitution. Like so many Fordham alumni, you can further the cause of justice in ways that help individuals and change institutions. And we face so many pressing issues today. Questions of liberty, equality, the fairness of markets, privacy, free expression, and many, many more challenges. And people will look to you to confront these challenges. Our society will look to you for leadership. People will depend on you. Whether you choose government service, public interest work, a small or a big firm, whether you practice criminal law or corporate law, constitutional law or commercial law, you can and you will make a difference every day with your legal skills and your talents. And you are ready for this. Indeed, you have already begun to make a difference. Throughout your time at Fordham Law, you have displayed a devotion to service that has made all of us proud. I have recently learned that as a class, you have performed nearly 100,000 hours of public service during your time at Fordham Law. Congratulations. Those of you who participated in our clinics represented a variety of clients in matters of vital importance. You assisted small business owners, individuals with onerous tax burdens, and asylees who were escaping persecution in their home countries. Others of you who participated in our PERC student groups advocated for many vulnerable groups, including individuals facing consumer debt proceedings, immigrant women and children applying for asylum, and incarcerated individuals. As you have displayed excellence 
through your acts of service, so too you have distinguished yourselves through your scholarship and publications. One of the central missions of universities, and law schools in particular, is to cultivate deep thought, to promote the thoughtful and deliberate examination of an issue using research and evidence. This kind of inquiry is particularly needed in our society today, where facile punditry often takes the place of wisdom and learning. You have used your knowledge and insights to make important scholarly contributions. A number of you have produced timely scholarship that has won awards from important legal organizations, including the Ameri American College on Bankruptcy Law, the Federal Bar Association, and the Environmental Law Institute. Many of you have organized conferences and public programs dealing with some of the most pressing issues of our time, criminal justice reform, civil litigation, corporate sustainability, the fate of the European Union, free expression, human rights in China, and the list goes on and on. Speaking of your class's scholarly achievements, I absolutely cannot exclude mention of a historic first related to our law reviews and competition teams. First, a bit of context. Fordham Law School was founded in 1905. It wasn't until 13 years later, in 1918, a hundred years ago this fall, that the school welcomed its first cohort of women students. Eight women enrolled alongside 312 men. Today, I am proud to say that for the first time, women in this year's graduating class held the top editor-in-chief position in all six of the school's student-edited journals. As well, I'm not done, as well as the top positions for our Moot Court Program and the Dispute Resolution Society. May I ask that each of these eight women please stand. Amelia Brunello, Nicole Comer, Elizabeth Evans, Natalie Jensen, Alex Kirk, Julia McAllister, Tess Sadler, and Julia Tallarico. These women managed large staffs, accommodated hectic schedules, and enhanced the excellence that has marked each of these publications and competition programs since they were founded. These eight women deserve yet another round of applause. We are also proud that today nearly 54% of you are adding to the ranks of powerful women attorneys and legal professionals. I also want to salute the graduates who came to Fordham Law School from more than 40 countries around the world. You took it upon yourselves to study a radically different legal system in a language that is not native to you. Congratulations for your fearlessness and fortitude. <laughs> Members of the class of 2018, we are expecting great things from you. All 560 of you, 371 JD graduates, 164 LLM graduates, 22 MSL graduates, and three SJD graduates, to be precise. You have the skills, the creativity, the ingenuity, the determination, and the judgment to affect real change. And you have the family of Fordham lawyers to support you. At Fordham Law, community is a central value. It is important that we not only support others, but also acknowledge and appreciate the support that each of us has received. You have been supported by a community of people who believe in you and have nurtured your success. I'm talking, of course, about your family and friends, those who love you and who celebrate your every achievement. I would like to ask you, our graduates, to stand and applaud the beloved members of your family who have been with you every step of the way.
On behalf of the faculty and administration of Fordham Law School, I thank you, the class of 2018. Everyone at the law school marvels at your talent and energy. We take pride in your accomplishments. We admire you. You inspire us to do our best. We are in awe of all that you have achieved, and we cannot wait to see how you will go out and lead the legal profession. Remember that we are in your corner. We, together with the great community of Fordham alumni, are your cheering section, your home team crowd, or as we say in Yiddish, your mishpacha. In sum, we are your people. As you strike out on your path, we will be rooting for you and be with you every step of the way. Members of the class of 2018, congratulations. Thank you, Dean Diller. We are all truly honored now to be joined by a great leader for a great university, Fordham University's president, Father Joseph McShane. Thank you very much. Uh, Dean Diller, I have to say that was an extraordinary address, but one that we all expect from you because you're an extraordinary dean. Uh, I may be wrong, but I seem to have detected in it a certain strain of Yankee pride. You are a Yankee fan, correct? Thanks be to God. We can continue then. We regard wealth as something to be properly used rather than as something to boast about. Here, individuals are interested not only in their own affairs, but in the affairs of the state as well. We submit our decisions on policy to proper discussions, for we do not think that there is an incompatibility between words and deeds. The worst thing is to rush into action before the consequences have been properly debated. Mr. Capucci, Ms. Eiffel, Dr. Friedman, Dean Diller, Deans Emeriti Firic and Martin, members of the faculty and administration, parents and friends of the graduates, graduates and Gus. Ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare to send the class of 2018 out into the world, I'd like to take a moment to thank the members of the faculty for all that they have done for our graduates. I would also like to congratulate the members of the graduating class on completing their course of study at the law school. On behalf of the entire university community, I would especially like to congratulate those graduates who have achieved Latin honors, those who have been inducted into the Order of the Coif, those who have received special awards for excellence, and the women who were just singled out for special praise. On, be on your behalf, I would like to thank Ms. Eiffel for agreeing to serve as the keynote speaker at our ceremony this morning. As many of you know, and as the Dean has indicated, she is rightly acknowledged to be an extraordinarily effective advocate for the most vulnerable, vulnerable members of American society. Therefore, I know that her address will be one that will inspire us and one to which we will return over and over again and draw from often in the coming years. And now, my dear friends, members of the magnificent class of 2018. Now, I may be wrong, but Jesuits are never wrong, I would imagine that right now you are wrestling with two very strong emotions, joy and anxiety. As for the joy you feel, you have every reason to be filled with joy. After all, this is a moment that you have dreamed of for years. In fact, if the truth were told, and we should always tell the truth in the presence of so many lawyers, you have not only dreamed of this day, you have worked yourselves to the point of exhaustion over and over again to make your dream come true. You've mastered the loyally arts upon which your professional success will depend in the coming years. In light of all that you have done and been through, joy in point of fact may be too low octane a word to use to describe how you feel right now. Victorious, exuberant, sleepy, satisfied, delirious, those may be words that more rightly capture the way you feel. Now, as for the anxiety you may be feeling, you have every right to be a little nervous. 
or more than just a bit nervous. After all, you still have to face a number of challenges. Like what? Like sitting for the bar exam. Sorry to mention it. Finding your footing in the firm or agency in which you will test your skills and establish your reputation. Now, these are surely causes for concern, but I'd be willing to bet that whatever anxiety or nervousness you feel right now is really rooted in both the tenor of our times and the expectations that we all have of you as you begin your professional lives. With regard to the tenor of the times, you should know that we all share your worries and concerns. And how could we not? We are living in uncertain times, and that is another low-octane choice of a word. Our world is shot through with tension. Our nation is polarized to such an extent that we seem to become strangers to one another. As a result, even casual conversations seem to be occasions for explosive recriminations and holiday dinners are dreaded. Fake news ominously spreads suspicion via the Internet. The most vulnerable in society are more marginalized and defenseless than ever before. Therefore, like Matthew Arnold, both you and we may understandably feel like we are wandering between two worlds, one dead, the other powerless to be born. Therefore, my friends, if you feel more than a bit anxious, you're not alone. Your anxiety, of course, is more acute than the garden variety anxiety that the general public suffers from. Your anxiety is made all the greater by the fact that you know and live with the realization that we, the general public, expect you to be the ones who will help us thread our way forward, those who will stand up for the victimized, those who will champion the rule of law in uncertain times, those who will bring sane balance back into the life and discourse of the public square. Good Lord, your heads must be spinning and your hearts racing as you wrestle with these two very different emotions, joy and anxiety, exultation and fear. What a combination. Now other sectors, other professions, other vocations can deceive themselves into thinking that they are merely bystanders on the sidelines of history. But my friends, you cannot. And you cannot for three reasons. First, your own great desires, noble desires that you can neither deny nor run away from, have led you to this day and to the profession to which you will commit yourselves in a most public way in the course of this ceremony. Second, our republic's expectations and demands in these fraught times simply make it impossible for you, lawyers, to stand on the sidelines. The stakes are too high. Third, I remind you that you are not merely lawyers, as if anyone could be a mere lawyer, but Fordham lawyers. Therefore, you have been schooled throughout your time in the law school to believe that you have been called in a special way to live your lives always in the service of others. And so, my friends, on this day marked by joy, anxiety, exultation, and fear in a most uncertain moment in our nation's history, let me suggest that you allow the volatile mix of emotions in you right now to give rise to a solemn sense of purpose in all you do every day. Leave the sidelines to the timid. Embrace your noble and sacred vocation. Dig in on the difficult issues of the day. Bring balance and hope into not only your own lives, but into the lives of all those whom you will serve. Be examples of heroic integrity in a cynical age. And if you do, you will find joy and satisfaction even in the most anxious of times. Indeed, you will find joy and satisfaction precisely because you have brought civility, balance, and justice to a world that sorely needs all of them. And if you do, you will be our greatest benefactors, for you'll redeem our belief that we as a people are called to, be a great, to a greatness marked not by naked power, but by a devotion to the ideals that will once again allow us to say and to say with conviction, 
We regard wealth as something to be properly used rather than as something to boast about. Here, individuals are interested not only in their own affairs, but in the affairs of the state as well. We submit our decisions on policy to proper discussions, for we do not think that there is an incompatibility between words and deeds. The worst thing is to rush into action before the consequences have been properly debated. What a dream. What a noble thought. What a great vision. My friends, Fordham Lawyers Class of 2018, make this dream come true for us again. Redeem our faith in the ideals of our nation by what you do and how you live. Redeem our ideals. Congratulations to all of you. May God bless you and prosper the work of your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Father McShane. And now it is my great privilege to introduce a student who embodies the warmth and enthusiasm of the Fordham Law School community, our outgoing Student Bar Association President, Vincent Capucci. How's everyone doing today? Good? So, uh, Father McShane, before I got up here on the podium, he pulls me aside and he says, listen, if your speech is, goes on for too long, the band's going to start playing. It's going to be like the Oscars, and they're going to escort you out of here. <laughs> Father McShane, Dean Diller, honoree Sherilyn Eiffel, board of trustees, faculty and staff, family and friends, and of course, my fellow classmates, the Fordham Law School class of 2018. It is an honor to stand here with you to celebrate this day. Now, I believe that I speak for all when I say that this is an extraordinary class of Fordham Law School graduates who are destined for great success. We are strengthened not only by our intelligence, drive, and the quality of the education that we have received at Fordham, but more importantly, as a diverse group of individuals who are committing to supporting one another as colleagues. Today, we become members of one of the strongest alumni communities in the country. As our academic life comes to a conclusion, we must congratulate ourselves on the tremendous efforts we have devoted to studying the law under the rigors of the highest academic standards. Our minds have been shaped through endless hours of studying the law, analyzing complex legal issues, and mastering professional skills. We have seen the immense value of the Fordham Network, the importance of being a part of the Fordham family, and the history of this special institution. We are a group that understands that our responsibility is to fight for something that is bigger than ourselves, to become the voices of those who cannot speak for themselves. Whether we are tackling issues such as immigration, poverty, or human rights, we know that being a Fordham lawyer is not about the paycheck, but about using this power, this responsibility, for the greater good. We, as Fordham lawyers, are a special breed. In the service of others is not just our charge but a commitment that each one of us has taken, recognizing what the practice of law can accomplish to better the lives of others and to address serious societal and political issues which are ever so prevalent in our modern day. We will fight through challenging times. 
We will face adversity head on with no fear. And when we see injustice, we will speak up and take action. What tomorrow holds may be unclear. But I can say with absolute certainty that this class will give its all to continue the Fordham Law legacy. Society will look to each and every one of us as leaders to help them work through some of the most challenging issues that one can face. But every graduate here today is ready to meet this challenge. So my friends, believe in something bigger than yourselves, believe that you will succeed, and believe that you will make a difference. Class of 2018, our journey has only just begun. Thank you. At this moment, I would now ask that Dean Diller come up to the podium to accept the class gift. Um, for this year, we raised over $8,000. And in honor of next year being the 100th anniversary of women at Fordham Law, we have decided to allocate our donation to the various student groups who devote countless time and en energy to advocating on behalf of women. These groups will include Fordham Law Women, Domestic Violence Action Center, Immigration Advocacy Project, Advocates for Sexual Health and Reproduction, and Anti-Trafficking Legal Advocacy Society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you for your leadership, and thanks to the class of 2018. Now, Professor Daniel Capra, the Reed Professor of Law and Chair of the Student Honors and Prizes Committee, will announce the Eugene Keefe Award. And Vincent Capucci, the President of the Student Bar Association, and Leonardo Labriola, the Vice President of the Student Bar Association, will present the Teacher of the Year Awards. It's uh, my honor to present the Keefe Award. The Eugene Keefe Award is, I guess you would say, the MVP award for uh, the student body. And um, there were a, a number of, it was a heavy competition this year, I'd have to say. And by the way, uh, hello way back there by the foul line. I hope you're, you're still with us. It's uh, this is a giant place. It's cool with baskets and everything. But anyway, um, let's get back to the Keefe Award. The Keefe Award this year is awarded to Kasim Lockhart for his outstanding... <laughs> So I needn't say more. I mean, he can just come up. His career at the law school is in the program. Come on up, Kissing. I would like to first thank God, my mentors, professors, classmates, the Office of Student Affairs, the Black Law Students Association, my family, and last but not least, certainly not least, my mother. For without them, I would not be standing here as a recipient of the Eugene J. People. Eighteen years ago, when my mother and I migrated from the Commonwealth of Dominica, I gleamed with excitement. New York wasn't somewhere that was foreign to me, as I visited several times before, but knowing that I would live in New York for good, thereby being able to have snowball fights, see tall buildings, and acquire a New York accent were things that my seven-year-old self could not wait for. Then came September when my first day of school in America finally arrived. That morning, 
My mother walked me to school with a firm grip of my hand, as was her ritual. As was my ritual, I attempted to rebut her hand holding with attempts at twisting my hand loose from her grasp. She ended up winning that battle, as was the case for all of our previous hand holding battles. When I arrived at school, my excitement quickly faded. No longer was I at the Pebush Primary School in Dominica, which had only about 100 students. I was now at PS 127 with over 1,000 other students. As I was stricken with apprehension, it was at that very moment that my mother was finally ready to let go, to re to let go of my hand. I, however, was reluctant to let go of hers. I asked her to stay, but to no avail, and consequently, I ended up crying for my entire first day of third grade. Looking back, as I stand here as a law school graduate, I realize that I shouldn't have let the fear of a new beginning and environment scare me. My mother let go of my hand that day because she knew that I was ready. She had prepared me for success, protected me from harm, and kept me from venturing far away from her grasp until she knew that I could flourish on my own. Today, we, Fordham University School of Laws, graduating class of 2018, are faced with our very own new beginning and environment, the real world. Intimidating as that prospect may seem, we should face our new beginnings with confidence. For the last three years, Fordham Law has been holding our hands, preparing us for success, molding us into top-notch lawyers of tomorrow, all while keeping us from venturing away from her grasp until today, the day that she has chosen to let go of our hand, knowing that we will flourish on our own. Our success, however, will not be determined within the first day, month, or year. My perception of success stems from a statement that my torts professor, Gail Hollister, told our class towards the end of our 1L year. She said, some people hit the ground running, others, they hit the ground, but they get back up and get to running as well. Lastly, now that our hand is free, Class of 2018, I urge you to use that free hand to lend a hand to those who may not hit the ground running so that getting back up will be easier. Give a hand to the, hand, to the classes following us, and finally give a hand to Fordham Law as a whole. Collectively, these gestures will strengthen the Fordham Law community that has brought us, brought us here today. Thank you. Everyone, it is my honor to present to you awards for Adjunct of the Year and Teacher of the Year. Every year, these honors are awarded to two Fordham professors and are the only awards that are nominated by the students, voted on by the students, and ultimately selected by the students. Now, most of you can probably appreciate just how rare any sort of agreement is among such a large group of law students. However, despite our willingness to argue over absolutely anything or nothing, we have found a way to agree on one thing, and that is the unrivaled quality of the two professors we have here today. The first award is for adjunct of the year. It is presented to an outstanding member of Fordham Law's adjunct faculty. Now, for those of you who don't know, an adjunct professor is a very special type of teacher. These individuals teach fascinating courses in unique areas of law, and they do so while actively practicing law full time. They will often spend tireless work weeks as public defenders, senior partners, prosecutors, or judges, and then, with their free time, they devote themselves to us, the students, and fostering our academic and professional growth. This year's Adjunct of the Year teaches students one of the most critical skills they will need as lawyers, the ability to communicate. In the classroom, this legal writing teacher helps students to form compelling and persuasive legal arguments in briefs and to express thorough and unbiased legal analysis in memoranda. However, what makes Professor Nicholas Haddad such a worthy recipient of the Adjunct of the Year Award 
is more than just his effectiveness in shaping his students as writers. In addition to leading patient and effective lectures and working as a senior legal editor for Thomson Reuters, Professor Haddad then makes himself available for countless additional hours to meet with his students to figure out where they come from and where they hope to go in their legal careers. Then he selflessly leverages his legal experience and his personal connections to empower students to accomplish their goals. I had the distinct pleasure of take, taking legal writing with Professor Haddad three years ago. When I started school here, I was just a bartender uh, who knew nothing about, well, much of anything, uh, but I definitely had no idea what was in store for me in law school or how to be successful in a professional legal world. Professor Haddad took the time to help all of his students understand what success looks like in law school in all of its forms. He guided us in discovering our goals, and then he inspired us to accomplish them. And he showed us how to find our place in what I think we all know can be a competitive and often confusing law school environment. I would not be where I am today without Professor Haddad, and in that, I am not alone. On behalf of the students, it is an honor and it is my personal joy to present the Adjunct of the Year Award to Professor Nicholas Haddad. Wow. <laughs> First of all, a tremendous congratulations to all the members of the class of 2018. Please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Teaching legal writing at Fordham over these past five years has truly been one of the greatest honors and privileges of my professional career. We're so fortunate to have such an excellent writing program run by Rachel Vorspan and Ted Newstead. I want to thank them both for their expertise, their encouragement, and their guidance over these years. I also owe gratitude to my own first-year legal writing professor, Danielle Keat Citron, whose passion, intellectual rigor, and enthusiasm for teaching helped make me the lawyer and the writer that I am today. Danielle, who is now a professor at the University of Maryland School of Law, isn't with us at graduation today, but I look forward to welcome, welcoming her back to the Fordham community this fall as a visiting professor. I'd also like to extend my thanks to my students over the past five years, now numbering nearly 100, and my stellar teaching assistants. Each and every year, you challenge me, you open my eyes to new ways of thinking, and watching you grow as leaders and as professionals inspires me and energizes me every day. Thank you for helping me become a better lawyer and a better professor. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, I'd like to thank you, the students of Fordham Law, for choosing to honor a writing professor. These are indeed strange and uncertain times in which we live, and words matter more now than perhaps at any other point during this great American experiment. We live in a time where a 140-character tweet can quite literally threaten potentially devastating consequences, which we see playing out now in courtrooms across this country. And that's why I ask each of you as you embark on this incredibly exciting journey and this step in your professional journey, to recognize the power of language and of writing, whether it be in the courtroom or in any other arena. Substance no doubt matters, but the care, the rigor, and the respect with which we express ourselves, both personally and professionally, matters too. Language is not just empty rhetoric. It has meaning and it has consequences. As attorneys, each one of us has a duty to recognize the power and impact of our language, our speech, and of our writing, not just for ourselves, but also for the integrity of our legal system and our shared responsibility as stewards of the law. I wish you all the best as you embark on this next phase of your lives and careers, and I have no doubt that you will make this wonderful institution proud. Congratulations again, and thank you. This next, next award is for Teacher of the Year. In various ways, this year's Teacher of the Year is someone who has made a critical impact on the identity of a Fordham lawyer. Fordham students graduate ready to actually practice law, full of nuanced legal knowledge and committed to the service of others. As part of that training, Fordham provides the opportunity for students to participate in real legal advocacy for real clients 
through the Fordham Law Clinics program. Year after year, Professor Ian Weinstein skillfully crafts a first-year criminal law curriculum that provides important, practice-ready learning, and he does so while maintaining an open dialogue about the important social justice issues that criminal law presents. Professor Weinstein is a teacher who always makes it a priority not only to meet his students, but to know his students. In addition to more than 80 first-year students, Professor Weinstein carves out additional time to oversee clinic students as their supervising attorney to empower them to make immediate and tangible differences in the lives of their clients. As a clinic professor, Professor Weinstein serves as a prime role model to the next generation of practicing attorneys. Guided by a love for his students and empathy for his clients, Professor Weinstein helps student lawyers to use their hearts as much as they use their minds. And in doing so, Professor Weinstein truly teaches his students by his own example, not only to be brilliant attorneys and fierce advocates, but to be kind and humble counselors. On behalf of all the students, it is my honor to present Teacher of the Year Award to Professor Ian Weinstein. Like the graduates, I must thank my family, uh, my university, my dean, my faculty colleagues, especially my clinical colleagues from whom I have learned so much, and most of all, of course, the students. Well, I guess that's the last time you'll be called that, the graduates. You have thrilled and puzzled me. After all, half the time, no one knows what I'm talking about. But you know how serious I am about our work. And you know I love you. That I am sensible of the huge gift you give me every time you come to a class or a meeting ready to learn. Learning is hard. We are often confused and sometimes wrong. And if I have loved you enough to help you accept the challenge of our ignorance, then sometimes I have been the teacher I have aspired to be. The words of the poet Khalil Gibran are often with me when I teach, and I offer you his thoughts from On Children I have edited. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and the daughters of life's longing for itself. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. They have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in a place of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. Graduating, you all look to tomorrow, and I have the delight of looking upon all of you. I know how much you love each other, and I know the work we have done together. And I think, challenges though we face, we will manage okay. And I thank you so much for the great honor you have given me. Congratulations, Professors Haddad and Weinstein. At this time, it's my distinct pleasure to invite up Sherilyn Eiffel to come forward with your faculty sponsor, Professor Gemma Salomene. I also ask Vincent R. Capucci of the Fordham University Board of Trustees, Father Joseph McShane, President of Fordham University, and Dr. Stephen Friedman, University Provost, to join us for the conferral of your honorary degree.
Throughout her brilliant legal career, Sherilyn Eiffel has been a force for equality, civil rights, and social justice. Since 2013, she has served as the President and Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, or LDF, the nation's premier civil rights law firm. The daughter of immigrants from Panama, Eiffel graduated from New York University School of Law in 1987 and spent a year as a fellow at the American Civil Liberties Union before joining LDF's New York office, where she litigated voting rights cases. In 1993, she joined the faculty at the University of Maryland, the Francis King Carey School of Law, and investigated lynchings on Maryland's eastern shore, leading to her critically acclaimed book on the courthouse lawn confronting the legacy of lynching in the 21st century. Today, Eiffel is a leading voice on civil rights at a, a pivotal time in our democracy, fighting against voter suppression, advocating for policy reforms, and protecting the most marginalized members of our society. For her lifelong commitment to racial justice and equal opportunity, we, the President and Trustees of Fordham University, in solemn convocation assembled, and in accord with the chartered authority bestowed upon us by the Regents of the University of the State of New York, declare Sherilyn Eiffel, Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, and that she may enjoy all the rights and privileges of this, our highest honor. We have issued these letters patent under our hand and under the corporate seal of the university on this, the 19th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2018. Sherilyn Eiffel became the seventh president and director counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund in 2012. It was a homecoming of sorts for her, as she had worked at the LDF as assistant counsel for a couple of years after she graduated from law school. At this initial position, Ms. Eiffel litigated many important voting rights cases, including the Supreme Court case, Houston Lawyers Association, versus Attorney General of Texas. The landmark case sought to include judicial elections as a provision of the Voting Rights Act to ensure greater diversity in the judiciary. Ms. Eiffel was the lead litigator of the case, and she was only 28 years old. In a 6-3 decision, the court ruled in Eiffel's favor. And who was one of the six justices who joined the majority opinion? Justice Thurgood Marshall, the country's first African-American Supreme Court justice, and early in, her, in his career, of course, the first president of LDF. Ms. Eiffel proudly carries on the legacy of great LDF leaders like Marshall and Jack Greenberg, who, with Marshall, litigated Brown v. Board of Education, and Elaine Jones, the first woman to hold the LDF presidency. Ms. Eiffel grew up in Queens, the same childhood borough as fellow LDF trailblazer Franklin Williams. Eiffel came from a big family. She was the youngest of 10 children, eight girls and two boys. Her father, a social worker in Harlem, never doubted his youngest daughter's potential. He always told her that she is destined for greatness. 
and greatness she has attained. Following her first stint at LDF, she joined the faculty at University of Maryland School of Law, where in addition to teaching and mentoring the next generation of civil rights lawyers, she continued to litigate and consult on a broad range of civil rights cases. She also launched several innovative legal offerings at the law school including an environmental justice course in which students represented rural communities in Maryland and one of the first legal clinics in the nation focused on removing legal barriers to formerly incarcerated persons seeking to responsibly re-enter society. Ms. Eiffel is also a critically acclaimed author. Her book, On the Courthouse Lawn, Confronting the Legacy of Lynching in the 21st Century, reflects her lifelong engagement in and analysis of issues of race and American public life. Her scholarly writing has focused on the importance of diversity on the bench, and she is currently writing a book about race and, the Supreme, and Supreme Court confirmation hearings. I also want to note this, that Ms. Eiffel has a connection to our school through one of our beloved clinical professors, Gemma Salomene. Gemma and Miss Eiffel attended law school together and became fast friends. So close are they, in fact, that they were maids of honor at each other's wedding, weddings and are godparents to each other's children. In a video interview published late last year, Miss Eiffel reflected on the perspective her position as LDF president affords her. You've been given great a great window into seeing the fault lines, the parts of the democracy that are weak, and your job is to make them stronger. You make them stronger by ensuring that the promise of equality and dignity and due process is available to people who are at the bottom. Ms. Eiffel represents the finest model of what lawyers can do as they strive to make their communities, their society, and the world a more just and equal place. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the President and Director General, uh, Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, Sherilyn Eiffel. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Good morning, graduates. And congratulations to you. This is a wonderful day. Thank you, Dean Diller, for that lovely introduction. Um, and thank you, President McShane, and congratulations to all of the awardees. Um, and I also want to salute this terrific faculty. Um, I am not long from law teaching. It's been five years. Um, it's something I loved very much. I know the kind of heart and work that goes into teaching, and I know that all of these graduates out here could not be where they are without the dedication of this faculty, and so I hope you will join me in a round of applause for them. I want to thank you for my honorary doctorate. I could pretend to be cool, but I won't. I love it. Um, I'm proud, very proud. And what a lovely treat to have my dear friend, Professor Solimene, hood me for this degree. Um, really a testament that life can be so sweet. She and I are um, our best friends. Uh, this is um, a pretty long road from Queens. Um, I'm thinking actually today of her mother and mine, both immigrants, who like almost all immigrants, worked hard to give their children a chance to make it. And maybe some of you are children of immigrants, or grandchildren of immigrants, or great-grandchildren of immigrants, or great-great-grandchildren of immigrants, or great-great-great-grandchildren of immigrants. And I'll tell you something about immigrants. They are peculiar people. First of all, they are people. They are people. And they're the peculiar people that they hear voices, like Abraham. They have the courage when they hear the voice of God telling them, go to a land they have never seen, they will go. 
because their faith tells them to go. They're like Joseph, who will hear the voice of God and take his young wife and baby to Egypt because the angel of God told him to go. And so I want to salute our moms and our parents and all of the immigrants down through the ages who've made this country what it is and who I see as the most compassionate and faithful and hardworking people. And I will say that they expected great things from us. And with the exception of a few years when Gemma and I were young and wild, we tried to deliver. And I hope we've made them proud today. I know that there are many proud parents in this audience who worked hard and seeded into the graduates the best in the hopes that you graduates would make good on the investment. And today you've done that. You're graduating from one of the finest law schools in the country. You're entering a profession whose members have played a vital role in the creation of this democracy and whose members are needed at this moment as much as ever to protect the fundamental pillars of our democracy. I want to acknowledge the hard work and commitment and sacrifice that brought you to this day, the late night studying, the unending preparation, the financial commitment. You worked hard, you sacrificed, and that's no small thing. The sacrifice, of course, was not only yours, your families, your parents, your spouses and significant others, your children in some cases, your friends, they all formed a band of support and sacrifice to undergird you as you pursued this dream and today's celebration is theirs as well. I want to make sure that we all see this accomplishment for what it is. This is not just a commencement. At this point in your life, you've had many of those. This is the completion of an education that once you take the bar will usher you into a profession. And that means that you have chosen to devote your professional lives to elevating respect for the rule of law as your highest ideal. And your law school motto in the service of others charges you with the obligation to enter this profession with an eye not solely towards your career advancement and personal goals, but first and foremost in the service of others. To serve your clients and the rule of law, that's not a small thing. Take it from me, to be a civil rights lawyer, certainly over the last 30 years, is to have lost more cases than you won. But in every instance, to pledge your commitment to upholding core principles of fairness, of due process, of equal protection of the laws, to respect judicial precedent, and for the independence of the judiciary, for fair trials and the right of appeal, to innocent until proven guilty, to evidence and facts, and not just innuendo and rumor, to transparency and respectful dialogue. And this is not always easy, because as you know, our justice system is not always just. And when you passionately believe in the cause of your clients, when you see the operation of laws that discriminate or that are cruel or arbitrary, it's difficult sometimes to maintain your cool. But Thurgood Marshall, the founder of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and the first African American on the United States Supreme Court, held fast to a mantra he learned from his mentor, the great Charles Hamilton Houston, who said, lose your cool, lose your case. And we abide by that principle. And from the example of Thurgood Marshall and Charles Hamilton Houston and Constance Baker Motley and Franklin Williams, we learned other lessons. We learned that good lawyers persevere. When Constance Baker Motley litigated cases in the South, there were judges who, to those women out there who are editors of the law journals and leading moot court, there were judges who turned their seat around and gave her, gave her their back while she argued her cases. When Thurgood Marshall couldn't get a sandwich in the federal courthouse where he was litigating, challenging segregation at the University of Oklahoma Law School, he didn't let that stop him. When C.B. King, a brilliant civil rights lawyer in southwest Georgia, was beaten by a sheriff outside a jail in America's Georgia when he was trying to get civil rights workers out of jail, he didn't let that stop him. And when you feel sorry for yourself as a lawyer, I invite you to Go online, look at the picture of C.B. King, beaten and bloodied, and then look at the extraordinary contributions he made to this country in spite of that beating. But these pioneers also showed us something else. They showed, the, showed us that in the hands of lawyers who com whose commitment is to justice and equality, lawyers willing to put in unending hours of meticulous preparation, lawyers focused on the needs of their clients, on the highest standards of excellence and ethics, Lawyers who are prepared to be unrelenting in their determination to seek justice, 
the law can break down barriers and break open closed societies. The band of lawyers from whom you and I are descended, Marshall and Motley and Franklin Williams and Tony Amsterdam and Elaine Jones and Lonnie Guineer and Charles Ogletree and Ruth Bader Ginsburg are examples of lawyers who use the law to literally transform the shape of democracy and the meaning of equality in this country. These lawyers stand as powerful examples for us, examples that we desperately need in these times. Yes, I could not stand before you today before a group of newly minted law graduates and fail to honestly discuss the moment we find ourselves in in this country. I must do so because lawyers are playing and will play a vital and essential role in riding the ship of our listing democracy. We saw this when scores of lawyers rushed to airports around the country last year on the Friday evening that the president's travel ban was announced. We saw it after Hurricane Harvey and Maria. We saw it on election day in Alabama when floods of volunteers joined the LDF and other civil rights lawyers in poll monitoring to ensure that every eligible voter had their vote cast. We see it every day as lawyers around the country are filing suits to demand transparency, equality, and due process for those who are most marginalized and whose rights are increasingly threatened. Lawyers, especially lawyers with a commitment to service, have an important role to play and the rule of law is perhaps the most important remaining pillar of our democracy and it must be protected at all costs. And that job falls to you, to all of us. Three years ago, I delivered a commencement address at my, my alma mater, NYU School of Law, and I began by quoting that famous line from Thomas Paine's Common Sense, these are the times that try men's souls. And that was three years ago. I talked then about the trying times we were facing with new voter suppression laws and the awful devastating videos of police violence against unarmed African Americans. I raise this because I want to suggest to you that our democracy has been facing very serious challenges for some time now. The most recent challenges are very, very serious indeed, but perhaps they are just serving to expose to all of us that which was before seen by a narrow cohort of Americans, those of us who work in the field of civil rights. We have a unique and bird's eye view of the ongoing flaws in our democracy. We're confronted every day with the reality of inequality and injustice because we work with those who are most marginalized and for whom the law too often produces injustice. But now many more people around the country recognize that there are serious flaws in our democracy, flaws that have frayed the fabric and must be addressed before our democracy unravels. When we see injustice, when we see flagrant violations of the rule of law, what is our obligation as lawyers and as citizens of this country, as patriots indeed? It is the highest level of patriotism to work to make your country better. And I think this is the challenge that confronts you at this moment. Because the truth is, as Americans, we cannot unsee the videos we have seen. We cannot unhear the messages of hate and discrimination we heard in Charlottesville. We cannot pretend that we do not know that families are being torn apart. We cannot pretend that we have not heard the stories of women for whom the workplace has become a battleground against sexual harassment. Federal courts have now found that voter suppression is real. Some of you have been in Rikers and have seen the worst of our jails. What will we, what will you do? And so this year I feel compelled to quote the great Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist and former slave who reminded us that the whole history of the progress of human liberty shows that if there's no struggle, there's no progress. He said, find out just what any people will quietly submit to and you have found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. Power, said Douglass, concedes nothing without a demand it never did, and it never will. So what is our demand? What is your demand? You don't have to answer at the moment, but I'm asking that in the coming months you think about it. What will your contribution be at this moment to address what you have seen and heard? Now I know what some of you are thinking. I plan to be an entertainment attorney. I plan to work in securities or real estate. I'm going to be a tax attorney or probate attorney. I didn't get into this to reshape democracy. I get it, 
But to you, I would say that becoming a lawyer means that you have taken a sacred oath to the rule of law. You will become an officer of the court, and it will be your obligation to devote some part of your professional life to the work of strengthening the democratic ideals that the law is designed to protect. If our democracy is in trouble today, it is precisely because too few of us have regarded it as our duty to play a role in protecting democratic ideals, norms, and practices. Too many of us, and especially too many lawyers, have abdicated the sacred trust that this profession places in each one of us. Now, I know that this all sounds lofty and perhaps overwhelming. How will you do all of this while fulfilling the many other obligations in your life? It won't be easy. I raised three children while litigating civil rights cases and writing for tenure and chairing nonprofit boards and even leading the children's choir at my church. And I don't sing. In retrospect, I probably could have taken my, gas, my foot off the gas a little bit. But it was important to me, especially important to me, that my daughters see the central role of my calling as a civil rights lawyer to my life. I wanted them to know that work is not some place you go to or something you're obligated to do. I wanted them to know that the work I was doing spoke to my soul and spirit and that I felt privileged to do it. Whether I was in small towns researching lynchings for my book or writing briefs or visiting communities facing environmental justice challenges, I tried to help my children see the bone-deep sense of purpose that drove me. To do that and to help with homework and cook homemade dinners with my husband every night and bake loaves of bread from scratch every Christmas and plan endless birthday parties and enjoy our blockbuster video double features every Friday night and spend all Saturday morning attending soccer games and navigating the teenage years was not easy. I get it. You will have enough pressure in your life without me making you feel responsible for saving the Republic. But we are all born into the time that we are born into. Perhaps your great-grandparents were called to serve in World War II. Perhaps your grandparents battled on the home front lines of the civil rights movement or the feminist movement of the 1970s. Maybe your mentor was part of that band of brilliant, committed environmental attorneys who fought for things we now take for granted, the removal of lead from gasoline and all the other innovations that helped us appreciate our planet. These innovations and changes happened in just the last 40 years. It's only 64 years since Brown versus Board of Education. And without Brown, this room that I'm looking at would look very different. And these changes were not inevitable. It took activists and lawyers to move these changes and innovations from the fringes to the mainstream. And we, you and I, are all the beneficiaries of their sacrifice. So I feel comfortable asking you to find a way at this time to make your contribution. Pick, if you must, just one thing. Find a way to devote some of your time, perhaps to help save our planet, or to ensuring that the schoolhouse is a safe place for our children, that the right to vote, which the Supreme Court 150 years ago said was preservative of all rights is not only protected but encouraged and promoted as the ultimate expression of democratic citizenship. I must ask you to determine whether you can help bring humanity to our immigration policies or to make our education policies and priorities reflect what the Supreme Court said in Brown versus Board of Education, that education, the court said, is the single most important function of state and local government. I must ask you to find a place to stand against sexual harassment in the workplace and uphold the independence and integrity of our courts. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to work 24-7. Joy and laughter and fellowship are a form also of resistance. They represent an insistent determination to nurture our humanity. Joyfulness is a way of fighting for the health of your soul and your mind. Now, especially now, we need art to elevate our spirit and bring us catharsis. I've seen more plays in the last year than in the five years before. You must have impromptu dance parties in your living room. I personally must hear Stevie Wonder every week or my spirit is unsettled. I listen to Lemonade with each full moon like a ritual immersion in the fierceness of Beyonce. Curtis Blow, Son of the Bronx, and La India must be on the soundtrack of my workout. Shirley Caesar empowers me to believe that you can make it. Saturday mornings in my home are de devoted to the Bundesliga and the 
and the Premier League. In June, I will take off whole mornings to watch World Cup games. You must indulge in those things that bring you joy. You must allow the New York Yankees to lead you along with a great first half of the season and then begin their annual end of June slide that makes the end of every season a nail biter. These are the things that you, you must do. You have to live. But in this moment, you also have to give. You know this already. Many of you have already set your path to do this kind of work. You've participated in the extraordinary clinics that are offered at this law school, helping new entrepreneurs, assisting low-income people preyed upon by debt collectors. You'll take jobs, many of you, that will continue you on this path. Others of you will find a way through pro bono service or through participation in civic and neighborhood organizations. You'll, you'll register voters and mentor young people. You'll find a way to walk out of your segregated life and to seek affirmatively to learn about people with experiences different than your own. You will affirm the humanity of people who are different than you out loud in front of your family at the Thanksgiving table. You will do your part to ensure that every person is treated with dignity in our public spaces, whether it's a subway car or an airplane or a Starbucks. You will listen to even those who disagree with you. You will treat your opposing counsel with courtesy and dignity to set an example of our profession's highest ideals. You will respect the voice of your clients. You will attend school board meetings and vote in every election for every office. And finally, don't forget your commitment to excellence. That means that you must pledge to never stop your legal education. You may graduate today, but to be a good lawyer is to be a lawyer who is always learning. Set aside time to continue honing your skills and analysis. Take pride in your work product. It's important at this moment in our country to demonstrate that standards matter, that intelligence, preparation, Meticulous research, sound writing, and logical advocacy still has value in our system. Even if those around you have embraced lax standards, stand tall in the tradition of this law school and of the best of our profession. I run an organization filled with young attorneys not that much older than you, the best and the brightest, and I'm proud of them, and I have trust that they will turn things around. And you, too, will do that you will do Fordham proud. But today, you will celebrate. You will have an amazing lunch, celebratory drinks, I suspect. I trust there will be music and dancing and good food and family and fellowship. And then there will be the bar exam. I will say it. There will be the bar exam. And you will focus, focus, study, focus, and pass the bar exam. You'll put in the time. And then, class of 2018, you will embark on this journey and change our world. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Ms. Eiffel. You are really an inspiration to all of us. And now let me welcome back Professor Capra for Student Awards. So I'm here to announce the uh, Student Awards. The awards are uh, listed in, on page 8 of the, of the uh, program. Not all the awards are announced today because not all the grades are in. Some of my colleagues have not finished their grading, and so they cannot, they cannot be awarded. Uh, but uh, that's not that they were required to. I'm not saying that. But at any rate, uh, the, the awards that we're going to announce today, uh, the way it's going to work is this. I'll announce what the award is and what it's for. And with the awardee, please stand up and give, them a, give him or her applause, and then they can keep standing, and then we'll give the whole round of applause. How would that work? Okay? And we'll try and do it quickly because I know you're, what you're here for. So, um, uh, first, the Abraham Abramovsky Award for the Outstanding Performance in Trial Advocacy goes to Elias Laris. The Class of 1911 Prize, that's for the best essay on a topic chosen by the Dean. This year's uh, topic was immigration, and the best uh, essay is uh, written by Emerson Argetta. The 
Joseph Crowley Award for Academic Achievement in Concern for Others in Honor of an Amazing Man, Joe Crowley, who was Associate Dean here many years ago, Frank Curl. The Mary Daly Prize in Legal Ethics for the Most Significant Publication Related to Professional Responsibility is awarded to Emmanuel Kim. The Dean's Special Achievement Award uh, for Distinctive Contributions to the Law School Community is awarded to two people this year, and they are right here, Vinnie Capucci and Leo Labriola. The Donald J. Furick Prize in Labor Law for the best paper on the subject of labor law is Alex Lau. The Philip Fusco Memorial Award awarded by the Student Bar Association for Excellence in Intramural Athletics and Academics to Patrick Tulin. The Walter B. Kennedy Award for Extraordinary Service to the Law Review, and I can attest personally to the fact that this is a well-deserved award to two people, Julia McAllister and Adam Minchu. The Donald Magnetti Award, a former colleague of all of ours, the late Donald Magnetti, for outstanding commitment and contribution to the law school community is awarded to three people this year, Meredith McBride, Dima Najib, and Andrea Rodriguez. The Lawrence McKay Prize for the members of the National Mood Court team who worked unbelievably well and did unbelievably well this year, Samuel Ballard, Aviva Kushner, and Anna Whitman. The Keith Miller Memorial Award for contributions to the Moot Court program, she should be standing, that's Anna Whitman. The Adele Monaco Memorial Award for positive impact on the lives of evening students, that goes to Marcella Jane. The Ann Moynihan Award for Outstanding Performance in the Clinical Program goes this year to two people, Emerson Argetta and Andrea Rodriguez. The Monsignor James Murray Prize for Achievement in Public Service and Commitment to a Career in Public Service goes to Emerson Argueta. The National Association of Women Lawyers for Academic Achievement, promoting issues related to, the women, to women in the legal profession, goes to Marcella Jane. The next award is the Par Parchimowski Siegelman uh, Student Graduation Prize. It's for the best work on legal scholarship, and it was, it's been the most competitive year since I've been involved in this, and the winner is Bronwyn Rowentree. The Robert Aram Renzulli Prize in Criminal Law for Excellence in the Criminal Law Curriculum and Devotion to a Career in Criminal Law, that's Rebecca Leitman. And the Jereen Frankel Robbie Prize uh, for Excellence in the Advanced Legal Research Program goes to Sum Young Moon. So, congratulations to all of you, and you deserve a w w healthy round of applause. And just one more thing, um, the uh, Fordham Law School is a member of the Order of the Coif, has a chapter of the Order of the Coif, which is for the top 10% of the graduates, and the, those who achieve that award after all the grades are in, there'll be a reception uh, in June, and I hope you can come up and pick up your awards. And finally, if you hang out afterwards, perhaps the faculty would like to come and say hi to you and say to your parents how wonderful you are, so if you want to hang out for a little bit after outside, love to see you all. Bye. Congratulations to all the award winners, and now um, I am delighted to start the main event. Um, I have to just say that in my 25 years at Fordham, I think that I have taught more students in this class than in any other class, and I am so proud of you all today. What a fantastic day. 
Um, so um, I am delighted to be joined by Assistant Dean Tony Yeager Fine, Associate Dean Claire Huntington, and Associate Dean Leah Hill in announcing the graduates. Dean Yeager Fine. Thank you, Dean Sujin. Ladies and gentlemen, I will announce the name of each graduate student receiving a degree today, followed by the country from which he or she received a primary degree. First, the recipients of the Doctor of Juridical Science, the highest degree awarded by the law school. Kweku Agiman Budu from Ghana. Christine Nana Tiwa Buama, Ghana. Oh, uh, Christine, I think you forgot something. With her beautiful daughter. And sons. One more. One more. <laughs> Flavio Jaime de Moraes Jardim, Brazil. And now for the recipients of master degrees. Please, ladies and gentlemen, hold your applause until all master degree recipients have been announced. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Banking, Corporate, and Finance Law, Amin Alberbushi, Saudi Arabia, Wijdon Al Hayid, Saudi Arabia, Andrea Allegra, Italy, Al Johara Al Udan, Saudi Arabia. Wendy O, France. Anandan Chakaparayil Baksaran, India. Carolina Cristiano, Brazil. Lucia Kolak, Croatia. Wen Yi Chui, China. Giovanni de Merrick, Italy. Hannah Simone Den Rasmussen, Denmark. Gabriel Dominguez, El Salvador. Eric Christian Ebdurup, Denmark. Hussein Emre Ene, Turkey. Omar Fauda, Egypt. Lucretia Frausen, Italy. Lynn M. Glass, United States. Charbel Hajj, Lebanon. Gonzalo Hierro Biatis, Spain. Zhao Xiang Ho, China. Zhang Yi Ho, China. Yasemin Isik, Turkey. Mason Gemma, France. Panayota Jani Tu, Greece. Yi Jung Li, Taiwan. Jin Ni Leung, China. Xiao Chi Liao, Taiwan. Federica Lombardo, Italy. 
Juan Lucia Pueg, Argentina. Zhu Jun Liu, China. Marco Maleshi, Italy. Malin Managard, United Kingdom. Shun Suk Mitsumoto, Japan. Juan Cruz Montiel Albina, Argentina. De nada. Kyle Morgan, U.S. Altine Noné, Italy. Akira Nose, Japan. Solana Pelayo, Argentina. Lina Maria Pinilla, Colombia. Parveen Punjabi, Panama. Florian Sanchez Coma, Spain. Juan Ignacio Sanguinetti Ferrero, Argentina. Nupur Shah, India. Banshika Sharma, India. Sang Myung Shin, South Korea. Manuel Silverio, Dominican Republic. Pollyanne Spinasse, Brazil. And her beautiful baby. Olena Tatura, Ukraine. Manuela Velasquez Fernandez, Colombia. Marta Villacoro Fuentes, Spain. Don Wong, China. Don Yong Wong, China. Chao Shi Wong, China. Bo Xiao, China. Anthony Yud, U.S. Cho Yan Zhao, China. Su Ying Zhao, China. Shui Ling Zhou, China. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Corporate Compliance, Katherine Anderson, United States. Sonia Bruner, United States. Audrey Chenard, Canada. Lauren Connell, United States. Susan El Ayubi, Egypt. Catherine Gavin, United States. Mohammed J. Hussein, United States. Doel Carr, India. Aline Guedes Klein, Brazil. Yuriko Kobayashi, Japan. Olya Kurilovich, Belarus. San A. Park, United States. Ilmira Sonseva, Russian Federation. Yang Wang, China. Adrian Wright, United Kingdom. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Fashion Law. Morgan Klein, United States. Tiffany Larson, United States. Nicole Phillips, United States. Laura Tang, Canada. Yuko Tsuruta, Japan. Fabiana Wallace Hernandez, Venezuela. 
recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Intellectual Property and Information Technology Law, Sobin Ahmed, United Kingdom, Anuj Anand, India, Alice Bastian, France, Alisa Bliss, Hong Kong, Stephanie Casimone, Belgium, Zhu Xiang Zhou, Taiwan, Romina Kurikiru, Romania, Ramya Ganeshram, India, Venkata Satya Sesha Kumar Garimela, India, Richard Gautier, United States, Agnes Gerhard, Latvia, Dinara Kamalova, United States, Hanna Kier, Brazil, France, France. The name seemed a little short for Brazil. Barbara Leal, United States. Philip Langeling, Germany. Zina Maheni, France. Daniel Martel, France. Olisa Wachetti, United Kingdom. Ronald O'Leary, United States. Krishna Parekh, India. Juan Ruspoli, Spain. Rilana Venske, Germany. Katarina Winkler, Germany. Yue Yuan, China. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in International Business and Trade Law, Maria Cecilia Alvarez Boyea, Argentina. Ivaz Gokum Beckler, Turkey. Anna Katalin Bitso, Hungary. Renato Jardim Filo, Brazil. Valeria Komisarova, Russian Federation. Aina Karakina, Russian Federation. Ohad Kreef, Israel. Nai Chao Li, China. Shun Li, China. Jian Xiao Li, China. Carolina Motika, Poland. Carolina Motika, Poland. Rafael Rencoret, Chile. Santiago Roca, Spain. Thais Silva, Brazil. Raquel Stepan, Brazil. Asena A.J. Surman, Turkey. Naoki Uemura, Japan. Edward Wilhelm, United Kingdom. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in International Dispute Resolution, Medu Amon Jeldiev, United Kingdom. Jien Chiari, France. Pedro Joaquin Romero Arnino, Dominican Republic. 
Carlos Veiga Sicupira Nunes Ferreira, Brazil. That's Brazil. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in International Law and Justice. Ros Angelo Adamo, Italy. Faisal Misfer El Hababi, Qatar. Moravid Bagheri, United States. Francesca Braga, Italy. Chiara Cardinali, Italy. Dominique Davila, Ecuador. Ludovica Fabrici, Italy. Chris Gabor, Ghana. Mohammed Zahid Hussein, Bangladesh. Laura Irazoke Reyes, Spain. Yamil Calcach Campos, Mexico. Jaesyob Kim, South Korea, with his beautiful son. Ramya Jawahar Kudakalu, India. Anne Charlotte Lagrancourt, France. Maroon Malouf, Israel. Sean P. Madden, U.S. Alessandro Nassimbeni, Italy. Adwoa Ofosu, Ghana. Frank Aboadwe Roxen, Ghana. Sayed Mohsen Rowani, Iran. Salah Mohammed Shafi, Bangladesh. Mrinal Sharma, India. Recipients of the Master of Laws degree in United States Law, Leonardo Jose Pinero Botello, Brazil. Maria Golub, Ukraine. Jan Hendrik Heinemann, Germany. Selina Klaus, Germany. Alex Kovko, Russian Federation. <laughs> Nino Kvara Trevia, Georgia. Our amazing singer and mother, Giselle Maglor Pinar, United Kingdom. Amber Melville Brown, United Kingdom. Carolina Mura Mafra, Brazil. Natalia Okul. Ukraine. Ya Peng, China. Anna Pesman, United Kingdom. Isabella Pires, Brazil. Tomomo, to, excuse me, Tomomi Takada, Japan. Oksana Glavatska Tunser, Ukraine. Noemi Vioni, Valoni, Switzerland. Miguel Vilela Casas, Spain. Chue Wang, China. Bin Yue Zhao, China. Recipients of the Master of Studies degree in Compliance Law. Hasna Alz, United States. Talib Amir, United States. Karsten Berlog, Germany. J. 
Jennifer Kang, United States. Hai Ri Li, United States. Amanda Beth Lenick, no, no. United States. Su Chi Li. Hi, Ri Li, South Korea. Sorry, sorry. Amanda Lennox? Yeah. Su Chi Lee, United Kingdom. Teresha A. Miller, United States. Vincent Pang, United States. Jonelle Peterson, United States. Michael Scopoletti, United States. Uh, Christopher Sharat, United States. Manisha Takali, United States. Nicole Trotman, United States. Recipients of Master of Studies degree in Fashion Law. Sana Ahmed, Canada. Marissa Friedman, United States. Sarah Gondor, United States. Whitney Jones, United States. Chelsea Lim, United States. Stephanie Roberts, United States. Nicole Soviero, United States. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the recipients of our master degrees. And now we will present the JDs. Amanda Nicole Adamchek. Blessing Adeyeye. <laughs> Daniel J. Alter. Bruna Martins Amaral. Jennifer Angulo. Emerson Gerardo Argueta. Taylor Dwayne Armstrong. Sarah E. Atlas. Yehuda A. Oman. Christina A. Awad. Ryan T. Babcock. Fazim Bacchus. Jesse R. Bader. Scott T. Ba D. Baker. Stephanie M. Baldelli. Mark Ross Baliatico. Samuel J. L. Ballard. <laughs> Philip J. Balzafior. Anthony J. Balzano. 
John R. Bambrick. Zoe Grace Bartholome. Deanna Baumley. Her degree is conferred jointly with a degree in Master's in Social Work. Christian Bernardo. Wes Benter. Deborah Leah Bessner. Laura A. Builder. Allison Bazako. Nathaniel D. Black. Samuel Bleeman. Shamola E. Bonner. Samuel L. Borenzweig. <laughs> Kenneth Andrew Brady. <laughs> Magdalena M. Brandao Granda. Razvan Braben. Chelsea Blair Bright. Her congratulatory letter is being presented by her father, Paul Bright, class of 1988. <laughs> Amelia N. Brunello. <laughs> Tabitha Adina Burnett. Vincent, Vincent R. Capucci. His congratulatory letter is being presented by his father, Vincent Capucci, class of 1984. Mariana C. Cardona Furpi. Colette Elizabeth Carmen. Jessica K. Carnival. <laughs> Kelly Rebecca Carr. Anita Rojas Carroll. <laughs> Jenna Elizabeth Carroll. <laughs> Timothy M. Carter. Michael W. Cavaretta. David James Chambers. Kevin K. Chan. Laura Longway Chow. Bilal A. Chowdhury. Alan Chen. Shin Chen. Yijun Chen. Gitanjali Chimalakonda. Michelle Lee Chipatin. <laughs> Jin Wu Cho. Youngjin Choi. Adam Robert Cohen. Robert Andrew Colton. Nicole Alexandria Comer. Arthur R. Cook.
Brandon Matthew Cordovi. Megan Ann Corrigan. Her congratulatory letter is being presented by her father, Bruce J. Corrigan, Jr., class of 1982. Robert Cortinas. Andrew S. Cota. Jean M. Cunningham. Meredith A. Cusick. Magana Lynn Dialeo. Kathleen E. Dallin. Andrew M. Darlington. Gina Belinda Davidovich. Joshua A. Duell. Nicole Davaris Morgulis. Sharon A. Danani. Abdullai Jiba Diallo. Dylan Nilsson Diaz. His degree is conferred jointly with a degree in Masters of Business Administration. Amber Andrea Dong. Gregory A. Dong. Dennis Fitzgerald Donnelly. Matthew K. Doyle. Jessica Ann Drake. Megan Rose Dran. Andrew J. Dunn. Kevin M. Dunn. Malik Javon Dunn. Brian M. Edelman. His degree is conferred jointly with a degree in Masters of Business Administration. Deborah Pelle Edelman. Kenneth M. Edelson. Zachary Loft Elkwood. Jeffrey L. Eng. Ian and Goran. Borgia Araglu. Elizabeth H. Evans. Ryan Christine Evans. Danielle M. Faella Falls. Jacqueline L. Felber. Erwin Fernandez. Ross J. Fiedler. Tal Finkel. John R. Fiorenzo. Kyle Q. Fitzpatrick. Mitchell Friedman. Michael J. Fronte. Alexandra Jane Fewer. Richard J. Fusco. Brian Patrick Geiger. 
Seth Joseph Gallagher. Mariana Lynn Galastegui. Matthew S. Garber. Ashley Jennifer Garcia. Gina Park Garcia. Joshua Jerome Garland. Dina Georgis. Rachel S. Gillette. Tiara Goldberger. Amanda Beth Gottlieb. Austin Joseph Green. Matthew E. Greenberg. Kevin P. Grenewalt. Douglas Albert Gretz. Livjot Singh Gruel. Patrick Griffin. Thomas K. Griffith. Stephanie A. Grob. Christopher John Guerin. Juan Yu Gore. Tina Gore. Jeremy Michael Shields Hale. Sean K. Hallisey. Thomas P. Halpern. Lindsay Howe. James Lawrence Harrington III. Brandon E. Heitman. Jonathan S. Herman. Matthew B. Hershkowitz. Dove Hirsch. Megan Ann Sika Halloran. Sarah K. Holm. Allison Lee Holtzman. Adam Jeffrey Holshu. Gareth Daly Harrell. Stephanie Shinni Shu. Anthony P. Infantino. Edishim Iqbal. David Bradley Eisenberg. Talia Jaffe. Wan Chang Jang. Taylor McInerney Jansen. Marcella Maxine Jane. Holly Alyssa Jellin. Natalie M. Jensen. 
Anthony McKinley Johnson, Jr. Falguni Joshi. Fatima A. Kabia. Ethan Bartholomew Kamer. Jonathan Albert Kane. Kara Deborah Kaplan. Jeremy M. Kaplan Hobbenstock. Nadia Kashem. <laughs> Owen Miguel J. N. Kavanaugh. Frank Rankin Curl. Sarah Marie Kehoe. Akbar Azam Khan. Beth C. Kinchuk. Emmanuel Kim. Jung Min Kim. Garrett Kingman. Elizabeth A. Kirk. Peter J. Klebenow. Benjamin T. Klein. David Benjamin Cobre. William Brian Krakow. Jeremy Matthew Krebs. Brandon Dita Krekel. Gokul Krish. Nina J. Kucharzik. <laughs> Daniel Kugel. Aviva M. Kush Kushner. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole Kuzmik. Leonardo G. Labriola. <laughs> Victoria Ann LaGreca. Rebecca Sarah Leitman. Elias Laris. Alexander Richard Lau. Christopher A. Lau. Daphne Nicole Lazarus. Shauna Danielle Lazaro. Conrad Labar. Zachary P. Leibowitz. Michael R. Lemkin. Mitchell Levshitz. Alexander William Liebers. Sydney Siong Lim. Jonathan Y. Ling. Christopher Leshevsky. Kasim Kepler Leckhart.
Victoria Jenny Anna Lowe. Frank O. Loyacono. Gabrielle Jacobo Lombardia Gonzalez. James Michael Lopiano. Julia M. McAllister. Roberto Salvador Machado. Anthony Makaroff. Michael Garrett Mallon. Patrick Owen Malone. His congratulatory letter is being presented by his father, Mark Malone, Fordham Law School class of 1982. Jonathan George Mandarakis. Nicole Manganello. Patrick M. Manley. Gregory Roe Marcy Manring. Angel A. Marcial. Vincent J. Margiota. Jonathan B. Markowitz. Lisa Matsua. Meredith Jamie McBride. Connor Wardman McEvoy. Courtney J. McGarry. Kathleen Megan McGonagall. Dennis J. McGrath. Thomas P. McInerney. Sandeep Menon. Willine Christie Michelle. Joseph A. Milano. Elizabeth C. Milburn. Andrew B. Milstein. Dina Elizabeth Manassi. Adam F. Minchu. Anna Alexandra Mint. Manur Mizbah. Stephen C. Mucha. Hansley Mohan. Justin K. Maldivan. Mark Anthony Monaco. Paru Manga Bhatia. <laughs> Sam Young Moon. Elizabeth Rose Moore. Her congratulatory letter is being presented by her father, Tom Moore, Fordham Law School class of 1983. Michael Christopher Moore. Giselle L. Maquette. Julianne Marie Mulhall. 
Ariel D. Moltec. Lucia Wen Montian, Anne M. Murphy, Dima Nagi, Yvonne Marie Neptune, Vincent D. Wynn. Jake A. Nussbaum. John Wayanata. Gregory O'Brien. Christine Marie Ullman. Miranda R. Unen. Isidua Oribabor. Giovanna Daniela Pacini. Her degree is conferred jointly with a degree in Masters of Business Administration. Samantha Rose Padilla. Ashna Pai. Zachary Alexander Paiva. Leah Michelle Paul. Michael Parayanilam. Mirren Ellen Park. Svetlana Pavlovich. Delaram Paimani. Morgan Ann Pino. Smith S. Payanan. Emra Polat. Rochelle Alexandra Polsky. Kajan Aisha Pompey. Her degree is conferred jointly with a degree in Masters of Business Administration. Matthew S. Popper. Daniel L. Porat. Meghna Prasad. Amira Pravat Yeiser. Sean C. Prunato. Natalia A. Seni. Vera B. Quagliato. Aaron Quint. Matthias Rabinovich. John Tyler Reardon. Ben Reckinger. Arthur J. Reddington Coleman. Ashley L. Reicher. Allison Lee Richmond. Jake Dillon Richmond.
Natalie Laura Rios. Bronwyn Conwell Roundtree. Brendan J. Roberts. Andrea F. Rodriguez. Jillian Rose Roffer. Wilson B. Rosa. Michael Luigi Rosella, Jr. His congratulatory letter is being presented by his father, Michael Rosella, class of 1981, and his mother, Professor Paula Francese, a member of Fordham's adjunct faculty. Rebecca Jean Rosen. Megan A. Razanka. Tess Michelle Sadler. Red One Ibn Saleh. Jacob Richard Samuels Kalau. Johnny Ricardo Santa Cruz. Anna Verena Sarmento Nigro. Marty Fallon Satnick. Christina M. Sauerborn. Danielle Nayel Sayed. Olivia Scandora. Eva Karuzzi Schneider. Russell Joseph Schneider. David Schnur. Zachary A. Schreiber. Darian P. Schwartz. Katerina R. Schweitz. Joanna Lee Sedlak. Ariel Stephanie Shahid. Jillian Shapiro. Nathan Sheps. Ripley Brooke Shirella. Hey Jin Shin. Elena Strachman. Sabit Siddiqui. Merav Silverstein. Kamaljit K. Singh. Gabrielle Alexa Siskind. Elizabeth Snyder Wood. Thomas 
Lindsay Sperber. Janin S. Stein. Ben Z. Steinberger. Danielle R. Strandberg Peshkin. Rebecca A. Susco. Sarah Elizabeth Swain. Justin Max Taffet. Ardian Tagani. Julia Ann Tallarico. Stephanie R. Tallering. Lawrence P. Tardabono, Jr. Anthony F. Tedesco. Tara Tegalici. Grace A. Thompson. Juliette Marie Todd. Elizabeth A. Tolan. Daniel Patrick Tonner. Patrick Murphy Tulin. Amy C. Torres. Rodrigo Andres Tranamio. Catherine Ann Troy Tremble. Michelle Danielle Tuma. Akruti G. Vakaria. Brian Enrique Valladares. Elizabeth Ann Van Buskirk. Ariana Van Sleipman. Katerina Rose Variale. Abtine Vaziri. Jeffrey Lewis Volpentesta. Lawton Avery Wakefield. Jacob Daniel Walpert. Andrew Michael Washburn. Rachel H. Wiener. Samuel B. Weiss. Catherine Elizabeth Wentworth Ping. Her congratulatory letter is being presented by her husband, Alexander Wentworth Ping, class of 2013. Jared Eric Weisel. Matthew Thomas Williams. Anna Tarlov Whitman. Ye Li Wu. Catherine Regina Peluso. Brett J. Workman.
Katherine Sayer Wright. Trevor Waisaki. Stan Yakov. Imran A. Yassin. Rachel E. Yud. Diana Yuan Yuan. Caitlin Alisa Zacharias. Nissan C. Zaghi. Sipora Zainas. Jason L. Zhang. Kashin Zhang. Shin Shin Zhang. Mindy Rochelle Ziegler Stern. Christopher G. Zimba. Rebecca Beauchamp Zitel. Lisa V. Zivkovic. Stephanie Suniga Londonio. I now present the Fordham Law School Class of 2018. Congratulations! Before we close, I want to thank Dean Nitsa Milagros Escalera, her incredibly dedicated staff, and the entire Fordham family who made today such a success. Please stand and join me in welcoming Mr. Connor O'Kane, Director of Campus Ministry for Mission Extension at Lincoln Center, to deliver our benediction. Loving Creator God, of peace, justice, and love, we present ourselves in this assembly here today, proud graduates, faculty, staff, family, and friends. We gather now to ask for your blessing and give thanks for the many graces that you have bestowed upon us, minds with a capacity for intellect and inquiry, hearts capable of great generosity and kindness, and spirits illuminated with wonder and awe. As we go forth from here, may we always be attentive to the curiosity of our minds, the stirring of our hearts, the cry of our neighbors, as we strive to seek your face in those we meet, whether in the corridors of future workplaces or the ways and walks of our common home. Loving God, we ask your blessing on this special day, particularly on our graduates. Grant them peace, strength, and vision so that they may hear the call of our world and respond to it in fullness. And bless them with the comfort that they do not travel alone. As they accompany others, so too do you accompany them, with them in their struggles and challenges, and with them joyfully in their successes and victories championing truth, justice, and peace, voices of the voiceless, 
agents of your love and grace. In gratitude, joy, and a deep and lasting hope, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Graduates, one final assignment for you. Return your caps and gowns in the bins that are provided outside. And for the families, one final assignment for you. I kindly ask you to please remain in your seats until everyone on stage and the graduates have all processed out. Congratulations, everybody. Uh -huh.